Good afternoon from Australia. It is Sunday afternoon and it's baking time and a bit of meal prepping for the week. Scott, first with a big grin on your face. Well, you're poking your tongue at your cheeky monkey. Good to see you, mate. You're just in time. We're making fruity oat muffins. That's the first thing we're going to do. I've been doing a lot of savoury muffins lately, but um, I thought it would be good to do a sweet one because they're great to chuck in your lunch boxes, whether you're a kid or a grown-up. Um, they're also good for a breakfast, afternoon tea, a snack on the go, whatever. I love muffins, as you guys know. In fact, I almost resemble one. I have a muffin top <laughs> and I'm proud of it. But um, this recipe is from a magazine that our local grocer puts out weekly for free. And there's always recipes on the back. And just with this whole cheap and cheery concept, hey, cement shoes, good I Groover. Um, oats make things go a long way and they're yummy. If you don't like oats and fruit, then this muffins probably won't appeal to you. But that's what we're going to make. And the link to this recipe is in the description. Also, I recommend you check out Hill Street's website because there's a recipe. Um, they have all of the recipes they put in their magazines up there. And a lot of them are really good family-friendly recipes. But then there's also your wife says email a couple over. All righty. Um, I'll get that express post pack happening shortly. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of really good family-friendly budget sort of meal uh, recipes. But also if you are feeling like making something a bit fancy and treating yourself, there's a lot of those sorts of recipes too. First thing we're going to do is chuck the oven on to... 200 degrees Celsius, Scott or Cement Shoes, you'll need to uh, find out the Fahrenheit variation. <laughs> You're ready to eat some muffins? Yeah, it always reminds us of Amber and Dr. Curry, doesn't it? I got my husband to pick up the muffins. We're just going to lightly grease a muffin tray. There's no um, muffin... Um, holder things whatever they're called we're going to be putting them straight into this tin today so just give them a spray I'm just using a coconut oil I find the flavor of coconut even if it does end up in these muffins yum 400 degrees there you go but you can use a virgin olive oil or any kind of cooking spray whatever you've got that's the whole point so the oven is um, a cranking we've got our little tray good to go the first thing we need to do is oats and some milk we're not using instant oats by the way we're using the rolled oats you didn't need to look it up Carnegie cook <laughs> mm, oil or cuck sorry nice to have you here Carnegie cuck so yeah we're using the rolled oats not the instant I've found don't ever use instant oats in a recipe unless it says to use instant oats because they ruin everything. Use the good old-fashioned rolled oats. We're going to chuck a cup of that. We're using the big bowl because everything's ultimately going to end up in the big bowl. I a lot of recipes these days automatically have both of the conversions but not Hill Street. 392 is the exact number. So you did look it up. What did your wife tell you? And then a cup of milk. Um, we do have bottles of milk and cartons and all the rest of it, but I'm into the lactose free, so it's in this little long life thing, which is great. You can have these, you know, on standby in case you run out of milk. I, I know Mel Mel often says that you guys in the States, you don't have the long life milks, but they're bloody awesome. Scott is exact as hell, baby. <laughs> Just mix the milk and the oats together because we're a soaking. We're just soaking the oats for about 15 minutes while we do a few other, get the dry ingredients happening. So just get all the oats mixed in with the milk. And set that aside. See if they were instant oats, the soaking for 15 minutes in milk wouldn't work at all. Let's get the dry ingredients happening. 
we first up we want um, a cup of flour. Now, this recipe says to use wholemeal flour. I don't have wholemeal flour in my kitchen. Are you silly? I'm going with plain flour, but if you're into the wholemeal flour, go for it. But the whole point of these cooking sessions is to show you how to, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. You're cooking. Whoops. <laughs> Half a cup this is, so I'm putting in two of these. You're all excited. You are Carnegie cuck, cook, cuck, like as in cuckold, right? Are you a cook or a cuckoo? <laughs> I'm just going to call you Carnegie or CC for short. A cup of flour, wholemeal, plain, whatever you want. If you want to use posh flours like coconut and almond, you need to Google the ratio because they're different. But, yeah, I'm just being a heathen and going with the plain flour. Next, we're going to chuck in a pinch of salt from our salt pig. All of the above. Okay, Carnegie. Carnegie cook. Cut. We also need to add baking powder. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. I'll just have you know. We want a teaspoon of that. In the bowl she goes and we also want to add bicarb soda different to baking powder i think in america you guys call it i mean that's my own handwritten label but i think you guys call it baking soda we only want half a teaspoon of this stuff this stuff's like how to make a volcano this stuff's going to make the whole thing rise hopefully we'll see i haven't made these before so We're all experimenting together. Now, the next ingredient is um, ground cardamom. I always have cardamom pods. Yeah, baking soda, I thought so. So, yeah, you've got your baking powder and your baking soda. I've always got the pods. I've also got cardamom seed because I make a tea with cardamom seed. I don't actually have ground cardamom. I could ground these. I could grind these. I could also grind the seeds, but... Not everyone has cardamom in their house, so let's just go back to basics, right? And chuck in a teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh, no, I've got other things in my herbs that look like dope. That doesn't look like marijuana. Come on. The pods. Just get out the oregano, right, or the oregano. So, yeah, I'm going to chuck in a teaspoon of cinnamon because cinnamon, we're putting in pear, apple, carrot. Carrot's going to make it really moist. And um, so cinnamon works. And I'm a huge cinnamon fan. Put in a quarter ounce of weed. Pot muffins. I don't think anyone's – I mean, I've had pot brownies, obviously. I don't think anyone's ever, at least that I'm aware of, has ever made a pot um muffin oh, oh sorry little eggy we are about to get broken anyway so whoops whoops just mix these little uh dry ingredients together now i know the oats and milk haven't been soaking for 15 minutes so let's chat or i could get on with prepping some of the fruit i guess Maybe give the oats another five minutes. I've only been live for ten minutes, so mix this all together. I'll do it slowly. Add, add six drops of violently potent LSD. What? <laughs> Maybe I should rename this show. Maybe I should do like cooking cooking on cocaine. What do you reckon? I'd probably do like 20 recipes in 10 minutes. And then pass out before everything had finished cooking and wake up to a heap of burnt stuff in my oven. So that looks nicely mixed. 
I think the oven would eliminate the well you'd make you'd make your pot muffins with pot butter. Like you do it the same way you do the brownies. And they don't lose their potency. Let's get some of the um, fruit happening. We basically need one and a half cups of apple, pear and um, carrot. I just added up the three ingredients and I thought the easiest thing to do is just get a cup that has a one and a half cup measure and I'll just keep chopping things up till it's full. We don't muck around in this kitchen. Keep the skin on. I wouldn't be worried about peeling or anything like that. It's all good. In fact, it's good for you. So first up, we're cutting up a pear. We're going to dice the fruit and we're going to grate the carrot. Oh, you were on the other channel on your own, over on the Cheap and Cheery cooking channel. Well, I'm hoping, you know, go simulcast. We might get some new peeps over there too one day. But, yeah, it's up to everyone where they want to be. But it's a bit weird when you're in one channel and no one else is there and you're like, who's she talking to? Who's Carnegie? Who's Scott? Why can't I see them? I'm glad you're back over with us over here on the dark side cement just dice up your pear your apple doesn't have to be the same size it's they're going in muffins right but what i want to know is are these going to be moist lsd is a liquid so if you put an lsd tab in a muffin it would liquefy is that what you're telling me good to, i'm glad i've got some druggies in my channel because my community because i wouldn't know what you were talking about you need to educate me. Doesn't matter what sort of pear you use, what sort of apple you use. I mean, we'll do lots of other muffins on this channel because I still think it's a really healthy, easy snack and chuck these in your kids' lunchboxes, just not peanut butter ones because you can't take nuts to school anymore. Jesus. How, so many generations of kids, like, we just wouldn't have survived without pb and j right <laughs> i'm just like just seeing how far we were already going we're, we're nearly at half a cup from one pair just to give you a bit of an idea of ratios but i'm chopping up the whole pair i love me a pair i can't make these for my sister she's allergic to stone fruit including pears these muffins would kill her so when i freeze them i'll take quite a few to work tomorrow as well but I always freeze some, but I'll make sure I put a label on the bag so I don't accidentally give her one if she stays here the night. I like packing her a lunch the next day. If she's got to work the next day, I'll send her off with a little lunch box. You've been watching since the beginning times. Have you had lots of different names? I still don't remember you from the beginning of times with that name. Or have you just you just don't normally chat, Carnegie? Or yeah, actually, guys, just to give you an idea, one dice pair is pretty much a cup. But I'm not doing a bloody half a pear kind of scenario. So luckily, we've got a small apple, which will add a little bit more crunch. And we're just going to dice this little groover up too. Put some roofies in there for the first date. My God, you guys are hilarious. I think I've got an all-male chat. <laughs> That's all about cooking with jerks. Are there any channels on YouTube that do, like, pot brownies and stuff like that? I mean, if I wasn't a lawyer, I would, but I'd probably get kicked off YouTube in five minutes. I'd definitely be kicked off the Law Society uh, register if I cooked with drugs while I'm a practicing lawyer, that would be really dumb. Qualudes and quackers, <laughs> quackers. <laughs> who, who cooks little quackers? Unless it's some other kind of drug. <laughs> I'm seeing the little quacker in Western Australia that lives on Rocknest Island. 
Don't eat the quokkas. They probably taste, taste like possum, which I've eaten. Not a fan. But, you know, with this, the way the economy is, I think the people that pick up roadkill and cook and eat that are onto something. I just don't know if I could bring myself to do it. I mean, I guess you'd do anything if you're starving, right? But, like, when I watch alone and I'm like, I don't know if I could actually kill um, those animals. And then I'm like, but, yeah, if you're actually starving, well, you would. I'm sort of like I'd go on alone and just do fishing, but it's not enough to sustain you. You've got to you've got to kill and eat a moose, right? A quokka, it's like a little native Australian. I mean, shit, guys, we're already at two cups. What am I gonna do? Oh fuck it. We'll just that's not I haven't even put the carrot in yet. But I'm going to just grate one. Just give it a little wash. I don't peel carrots because I think the skin's got all the good stuff in it. You used to live in Perth. Is it like Viagra? As you know, it's really hard to get um, kangaroo meat. One of the friends of mine that came down for Dark Mofo really wanted some kangaroo for dinner. I was like, God, I haven't cooked kangaroo forever. Let's do it. We couldn't get it. And then one of the types of kibble that was Sonny's favourite kibble is kangaroo and sweet potato. And I can't even get her, her favourite. Is there some, like, Amnesty on culling, well, not amnesty, but, you know, like, has it been paused? Why can't we get any kangaroo meat? Even for our floofs. If you're a female kangaroo, it's easy to get. They <laughs> they do root. They root like crazed weasels, kangaroos. I used to do, um, I used to do tours, like, from the cruise ships out to Bonnerong, which is the wildlife sanctuary that I donate membership money to. We sponsor little critters. And whenever we took tours out there when it was kangaroo mating season, like they really should have just been playing some 70s porn music because we'd have all these American tourists who were so excited about seeing a kangaroo. And um, there was just like kangaroos fucking everywhere, like literally and figuratively. Bam, chicka, bam, bam. And we had to give, or well, the Bonnerong Rangers did, like a debriefing to the, um, or a briefing to the tourists because sometimes the randy male kangaroos would come up and, you know, hang around the ladies. But, yeah, they were literally shagging everywhere. I've got a comedy routine I used to do about it and it's pretty funny because it was one woman was, American woman was, screaming at the top of her lungs that she was being aired by a kangaroo and to get her to calm down after the kangaroo had moved on because all you got to do is tap them on the shoulder and they know you're not interested um i took her down to this sort of koala enclosure because i thought things would be a little bit quieter there and we're standing there and i could just hear this noise and I poked my head around the side of the koala sanctuary and there were t there were kangaroos just going for it up against the wall of the koala sanctuary and I lost it. I had to leave Mary Lou shaking and thinking she'd been violated by a kangaroo because I was laughing so hard. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a different bowl for my compost. <laughs> I'm just going to chuck all of this stuff in together and mix it up and then measure out a cup and a half. And then the rest of it I'll just have with my yogurt in the morning. That's what I'm going to do. Because I don't want to over moisten <laughs> the muffins. I mean, we love a moist muffin, everybody, but we don't want it to be overly moist.
it's it's um oh god, I nearly went so down the wrong road then about eating pleasure. Stop it, Tori. Morgan. Hello, beautiful. Thank God. I've been dealing with these perverted drug addicted boys. <laughs> I need another chicken here. Thank you for rocking up. So this is a mixture of diced pear, apple and carrot. So it's part of the muffins. Yes, moist muffins. They're going to be very moist. So moist. Let me just... I'm going to measure out a cup and a half of this mixture. And as weird as it sounds, the rest of it, I think I'll just mix some nuts and seeds through it, even though there's grated carrot, and I'll have it with some Greek yogurt and honey for breakfast, a bit of granola, because I don't want to... I don't want to make these too moist, Morgan. We can have a, a moist muffin, but we don't want a moist, moist muffin. All right, so there's your cup and a half. Okay. No, I know. We've all been mucking around. Who needs their muffins moisted? <laughs> Great. We have someone offering to moisten muffins. <laughs> Carnegie, my God, you're hilarious. Where have you been? Don't disappear again. Semi-moist. We want it to be more. We don't want it to be soggy is what I'm trying to say. Good grief. All right. So back to our um, moist oats that have now been soaking in milk for 15 minutes. <laughs> um, we're going to add a few more ingredients. Firstly, some brown sugar. Brown sugar. We want... Half a cup. Where's my half a cup of thing gone? Here it is. Half a cup of brown sugar, this sort of sugar. Not your granulated, your brown. The really crumbly, yummy, great on porridge brown sugar. That's what we're after. Muffin sauce. <laughs> There are some muffins I make that do have a sauce that you dribble, drizzle over um, and sometimes they're white and they look suspicious. They're like a white sauce. <laughs> I usually take myself into the gutter all by myself, but no, not today. Right, brown sugar, in with your oats and your milk. Whack it in, whack it in, whack it in. We're then going to add an egg. There she blows. Um, we are also going to add some olive oil. How much olive oil, I hear you ask? A quarter of a cup. Also responsible for making things moist. No white sauce on your muffin. Okay, Morgan noted. Where would you prefer it? <laughs> this channel is not set, neither is set to family friendly. Thank fuck. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Of course I do. <laughs> it's just fun to take the piece out of you guys. We also want to add some vanilla extract. Now, the real deal... Um, vanilla extract is crazy expensive, except for at this my local supermarket. Like this little bottle is about six bucks, and that's the cheapest. You can use vanilla essence, like you don't have to use the the real deal. But I will splurge. <laughs> I know we're all dead. Uh, we're revolting. Hopefully, hopefully, no one outside this great little community will find us. Well, hopefully they will. I don't know. Um, a teaspoon of that vanilla extract, and we're going to mix that well. Let's get the wood. It's time to bring in the serious equipment. 
the wooden spoon. I've just got a yeah, vanilla extract, extract is crazy expensive. I've just got to wash my hands. They're sticky. That's what she said. All right, we want to mix this well and we definitely want to make sure I've really got to get some kind of spotlight happening in my kitchen. We break up that egg. You don't want to have like, you don't want to be chomping down on a moist muffin and then you've got like a cooked egg yolk in the middle of one muffin. Mix it well. Then we're going to um, pour in the flour mix. And you just stir it till it's just combined. You don't want to overwork this bit. Be gentle. The secret to the soft, fluffy, moist muffin is not overworking this part. Be gentle, everybody. You want it just mixed. You don't basically you don't want to beat it the crap out of it for like an hour. But you do want it to be mixed. Don't overwork it. I think that's more relevant to like pasta dough and bread dough, but, you know, I'm being melodramatic. This, These are sexy muffins. Let's be honest. She's a bit of, um, you know, a bit of arm work going into this now, a bit of muscle. No yolk when you're chomping down on a moist muffin. <laughs> yes, we don't want to beat the muffin. Don't ever beat the muffin. Be gentle. I mean, it's, you can be a bit rougher than gentle, but don't beat a muffin. All right. And lastly, we're going to fold. We're going to fold in the diced pear, apple, and grated carrot. Fold in the cheese. What does that mean, Moira? It means fold in the cheese, David. If you say fold in the cheese one more time... I ordered during the COVIDs, I ordered a Schitt's Creek fold in the cheese apron and it never rocked up. It was one of those bloody dodgy Facebook cons. I was scammed. My fold in the cheese apron never arrived. Not happy. All right, now that's making one of those noises that some of you guys like if you're into the ASMR Thick and gluggy sound effects. She mixed. I've folded it, all right? That's how you fold. Um, now we're going to spoon this into the muffin tin. Do you know the muffin tin? The muffin tin, the muffin tin. It's right here. You just start out just dumping blobs in each cup holder thing you met you just folded the chest <laughs> you met your Aussie we met you before COVID COVID was until 2020 I've known you longer than that Morgan have I not did we not hang out in 2000 wish I'm sure we hung out in 2019 I started going live on YouTube in 2018, right after the Chris Watts repugnant human being. I shouldn't use his name. I started going live on YouTube covering the violent and brutal murders of Shanann, Bella, Cece and Nico. I, oh, man, I fold the cheese in. You got, yeah. Oh, yeah, the folding the cheese. I was folding the carrot, the pear, and dust up full strudel. And these only take about 20 minutes to cook from memory. So from when I quickly glanced at the recipe 30 seconds ago. Oh, sorry, no, 12 minutes. So there's no point even ending this live and coming back. Here's what I made earlier. We'll just hang out. And then once you've dumped doesn't look very pretty i've seen this sort of shit on the footpath outside pubs the next day i'm not gonna lie this is a vomity looking oh it looks like puke but i'm sure 
if they taste like they smell, they're going to be delicious. But in their uncooked state, it I think Sunny might have even contributed to the household by, by putting something like this on the floor once or twice before. It's pretty bad. It's not a pretty looking mix. Smells incredible though. That's the only thing it's got going for it. If it didn't smell good, I'd be chucking this off my deck. Down into the garden below because my house is on stilts and the wildlife could eat it later. But it does look like puke. You just uploaded some songs. Oh, yeah, the beach therapy during COVID was awesome. Yeah, Sunny, I knew you'd get all gushy about Sunny Bum. Just getting the last of the mix. But, yeah, it does look like something that wouldn't look out of place on the footpath outside a pub on a Sunday morning, if you know what I'm saying. Or something you'd feed children in a an English turn-of-the-century boarding house. But I just tasted it and it's delish. Oh, yeah, and I'm glad I went with cinnamon too. Don't get me wrong, I love me some cardamom. But I didn't want to get all posh and grinding up cardamom seeds and stuff. I'm like, just use some bloody cinnamon. Everyone's got cinnamon in their spice collection. Even if they've only got three spices, they've always got cinnamon. And then these little little fuckers, you always do this. This is something I learnt on YouTube. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but always drop your muffin tin. It helps them settle apparently. And here we have, see, tell me that doesn't look like puke. Like truly. Especially the bits of carrot. Anyway, there she blows, 12 minutes. Let's get a timer because I always chat and have no idea what how long has passed. So I do have to use a timer because I'm a bit of a dickhead like that. Biscuit and Sunny are the real talent here. Well, I don't know. Scott's recording songs. I mean, they didn't get distorted. Cool. Pop that puke in the oven. I have Carnegie cook, cuck, whatever the fuck. <laughs> Actually, I could just start. No, she's probably boring because I'm, I'm not going to be near the mic. I was going to go, I could just start doing some dishes and get the kitchen ready for the next thing. The next one probably won't be nearly as fun in terms of being pervy and inappropriate because I'm making a superfood salad, but... um. I mean, I personally just call it a simple salad, but I've had a few people ask me if I could just make like a basic salad because I've talked about how I like making a salad and having it in the fridge with a little jar of dressing next to it and you don't chuck the dressing on until you're going to eat it. But I often make a salad on a Sunday, especially in summer, I always do, but I was craving and you can get things like radishes and purple cabbage and stuff at the moment that's all really yummy. Um, so I'm going to make a salad and then, yeah, you can just put that in a an air proof, airtight container in your fridge and it lasts for a few days if you don't dress it. Um, start showing some sunny. When she comes into the kitchen, I show her. I throw the camera around and point it at the floor. <laughs> but the pick is in the oven. Salad, shmalad, where's sunny? So I will be doing a salad next and, yeah, probably won't have anyone in there for that. And then after that, I'm doing, um, I'm going to create a playlist for it on the Cheap and Cheery channel, cooking channel, um, of leftover chicken recipes because it's so cheap if you just buy like a barbecue chook or if you buy a chook because chooks are often on special and barbecue it yourself, have that for dinner. And then the leftovers, if you shred it, into a bowl and then bag it into like one cup size bags. Like I'm doing all these different recipes. So one of them is going to be a bit later on. It's going to be chicken and pumpkin, butternut pumpkin fritters. And then later in the week I'm going to do a coconut soup that also has shredded chicken in it. But I thought that would be a, a good way to pe te teach people some cheap and cheery cooking is if you can – Keep an eye out for, like, chickens that have been discounted, you know, because you can pick them up for five or six bucks. 
which is like half the price they sell for here. They're really easy to roast. I mean, I've, I'm pretty sure I've got a basic roast chicken recipe on the Cheap and Cherry Cooking channel, but if not, you can go onto Google and literally find thousands. Sunny is my floof, Carnegie, but Sunny Bum has four legs and she's fluffy. <laughs> Don't turn my animal into a porn object. <laughs> We're on to you now. Your little face lit up at the thought of bummy, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I want to do a series of, like, ways you can use up things like barbecue chickens and stuff. And if people are just a bit organised, because even um, when you strip the chicken, you can also chuck the all the remains into a pot with water and a few different things like some celery, some carrot, onion, and you can make your own chicken stock as well and it's so much yummier than the shit that you buy in the shop. But, again, we're sort of trying to find ways to budget and use the whole thing. Whoopsie-daisy, all. Yeah, not us. Our sunny is sacred, isn't she, Morgan? Look at Morgan's reaction. I call her Sunny Bum because her name is Sunny, but she's also got a big, round, fluffy bum, which makes me laugh a lot. She's very cute. Um, but anyway, these are cooking. You're all very good looking. So, yeah, we'll be doing the chicken and butternut pumpkin fritters a little bit later, and they're something that goes well with this salad that I'm going to be making. However, I've actually got leftover coleslaw from when I made KFC apparently chicken in the air fryer last night but it definitely wasn't anything like kfc but i didn't have all of the secret herbs and spices so i had all the spices i just didn't have all the herbs um but it was really delicious but i've already bagged all of those leftover chicken thighs up in the freezer because they're really yummy for like toasted sandwiches um, again lunches just pull one out of the freezer take a little bit of salad and you can have that, chop it up and pop it onto your salad. Um, I'll be doing exactly the same with the fritters, but I really wanted to do the barbecue chicken thing. I have got the Instapot. Yes, I haven't used it once. I got it during 2020 and I haven't used it because I've got a, I've also got a Breville fast and slow cooker, so it's a pressure cooker and a slow cooker in one. But I've got the baby Instapot and, yeah, I haven't used it. It's sitting in the cupboard. It just, it looks so painful at the start, like all the seal and everything. And it just, I don't know why, it just feels so high maintenance to me. Yeah, I do have to use it. I will. I've, you've, thank you for reminding me, actually. I've forgotten I had it because I was thinking of getting rid of the, um, fast slow cooker until I realised the fast cooker, I do love the pressure cooker. Like I love that you can come home and make a curry in seven minutes. I don't think I can get rid of that because I do like the pressure cooker, but I don't like the slow cook texture. We've had this chat before, but um, I know that I can do heaps more things in the Instapot. So, yeah. But I'm also, I'm, I haven't been using much my air fryer much, so I'm using that a lot now. I like the idea of the slow cookers, the set and forget or go to work and then you get home and something's cooked. If you, you don't use it, you lose it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, I do. He who hesitates masturbates. I know exactly what you're saying. Um, the air fryer is fabulous. I much prefer my air fryer to the slow cooker. But I know that you can make all kinds of crazy shit in Instapot. So but things like curries and soups, texturally, I don't know why, but the slow cooker, yeah, no, not a fan. I'd rather make them in a pot. But I still follow heaps of Instapot channels on YouTube. Come again. <laughs> I don't know. I think everything that's coming out of my mouth belongs in a 1978 porn. I don't even know what I just said then. 
But yeah, they don't like the texture. Is that what you reacted to? And we have had that chat. I was like, yeah, Morgan, I wish I could, but he too slimy. <laughs> Nobody likes slimy anything. If I make soup in a pot and I blend it up with my little hand mixer thing, beautiful. In the slow cooker, it takes eight friggin' hours to cook and then it's got this slimy texture. But I know, like, with Instapots, you can do all kinds of groovy shit. So I will have a bit of an experiment with it, but don't be surprised if it ends up being donated to the No Buy, No Sell group. Like, we have a group that you can give away stuff and you just put it put it up and it has to be up for a minimum of 24 hours and everyone that says they're interested, you pop them in a hat, pull out a name and give it away. That's exactly where I went. Slimy definitely makes me think of Ron Jeremy, especially when he was in action. Ugh, he was so gross. That man was so gross. So, yeah, that's what I thought of when I made slow cooker soups and casseroles. I felt like I was licking Ron Jeremy. <laughs> hey, Francesca, welcome to the porn cooking channel. Not prawn. Things have gotten dirty around here. Well, they've been dirty from the start. Started out a very male-heavy chat and it's just been in the gutter ever since and it's bloody hilarious. Oh, you're doing your resume. Oh, isn't that a horrible thing to do? I recently updated mine and uh, forgot how much I dislike doing them and then I found people that love updating resumes. I was like, shit. Why didn't I give them my resume in the first place? Melmo, hello. Instapot's so fast up. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely give, I'll, I'll give it a crack. But, yeah, I'm still having an hour about whether I keep the Breville slow fast cooker or not because the slow cooker part of it, I just, I tried, I tried many, many times and uh, men are like it. Yeah, we, we're in for it now with Mel Mel arriving. You're right, Scott. We cooking dirty and staying flirty, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Carnegie, holy shit, your lines are hilarious. Mel Mel, Francesca, you arrived after things calmed down. Um, previous Prior to you arriving, it was basically me and a bunch of dudes and then thankfully Morgan arrived and things got even dirtier. But you've missed all the filth. Like we have turned making muffins into absolute port. Well, it started out being cooking on drugs or cooking with drugs and then went straight into the porn gutter. And I think you both arrived right after I said something about licking Ron Jeremy. So, yeah, I don't know if you'd need to rewind this. Mel will probably block you for being a potty mouth. I would have clutched my pearls. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Carnegie's keeping it going. I think I've just run out of one-liners. Ron Jeremy's a slimy porn star. Literally and figuratively. Um, but most of the discussion's been about moist muffins. Uh you know, and then I had to fold in the ingredients. So then we went down the Shits Creek, fold in the cheese. I mean, Scott has been a total potty mouth. Cement Shoes has been the best behaved, actually, out of everyone. Um, Carnegie on fire. And at the moment we have muffins in the oven. Oh, they're done, apparently. Let's have a look. Yes, yeah, Cement Shoes has been the best behaved out of all of us. That's not to say he hasn't been revolting too. He's just been the least revolting out of all of us. These should be moist, yes. Let's see. Oh, they smell incredible. Oh, 
I'm just doing the skewer test. It came out clean, I think. Hang on, I need my glasses. This is the trap. You just stay back in the oven for us one second. I have to take my glasses off to open the oven door because they fog up. But then when I do the skewer test, I can't see if the skewer is clean or not. Bloody spectacles. All right, they're coming out. And thankfully, they no longer look like vomit. They're actually quite, well, they kind of do. And I need to get a spotlight. Actually, I wonder if I put the torch on my phone. Where is my phone? Over here. They don't look as much like vomit on the footpath outside a pub on a Sunday morning. Now they're out of the oven, but the lighting in this kitchen just doesn't, the lighting in this kitchen for just being in the kitchen is amazing, but not great on YouTube. A couple of them have risen. Does that make it better or worse or no different? No, it makes them two. They are, they look great. They don't look like vomit anymore all right i'm gonna have to extricate them from the tin they need to cool down on a rack oh i poked it in and tay always calls when we're talking about moist muffins damn her Easiest way to get muffins and stuff out, I find, with these tins is actually with a little, like a dessert, so like one, a soup spoon, and they're popping straight out. Yum. I made peanut butter cookies earlier too, but I didn't make them live. The recipe's on the, ow, oh, they're hot, um, on the Cheap and Cherry channel, the three ingredient peanut butter cookies. I made them for my neighbour earlier. Let's just loosen them all first. But you're not doing your cooking right if you don't burn yourself at least once per recipe and cut yourself at least once per day, in my opinion. I think some of them are a bit stuck. Not all of them. This will do just pop straight out. G'day, Griever. Yeah, no, they definitely don't look like vomit now and they smell incredible, that cinnamon and pear and apple thing. Mm. And the carrot is adding moistness but not really flavour, although who doesn't love a carrot cake? Oh, yum. Great way to hide the veggies and the fruits from the small children that are fussy or even the adults that are fussy too. I'm actually going to do a taste test with one of these with some butter while it's still warm because, hello, who, who leaves muffins to cool down, honestly? Not me. Oh, they all came out brilliantly. There we go. Ta-da. I'm definitely going to have to do a quick reset before I do the next um, recipe, which is a salad. So half of chat have already told me they're not coming back for the salad. But that's okay. I'm making it for the people who asked me if I could show them how to make a yummy, crunchy salad that doesn't go soggy. But the trick is to not put the dressing on till you're actually going to eat it. How come this, yeah, they've styled this photo. They've sprinkled oats after they've cooked them to make them look pretty like that. See that? I'm not sprinkling, sprinkling raw oats on top, but they are really, um, I'm only going to have a little one. They're really beautiful and golden, but I don't know if you can really see that. I suppose you can there. And they feel very light and fluffy and moist. You'll come back for the salad if Sunny is there. Food and dirty talk, good times, I know. Cody. It came out clean. That's what she said. Oh, no. 
That was one of the the uh, least offensive comments I've made in the last fifty minutes. Not gonna lie. Things got pretty disgusting earlier. All right, so for the little taste test, we'll just take one of the baby ones. And so with muffins, I usually freeze half of the remaining ones and then I take the other ones to work for lunch, but I also take the remaining ones for workmates. Sorry, I put four in the freezer. Then I have a muffin a day for my lunches and then the rest of them I take into work. And if work, the work girls don't eat them all, we put them in the freezer. So we've got um, a stash of muffins in our freezer at work too, which comes in handy because some days we just don't get time to take a lunch break. All right, it's now got Duck River butter drizzling over it, melting over it. But the taste test, how do the Hill Street muffins rate? For a taste test, of, taste test of small items at any time, I must use my ducky fork from my childhood. Isn't it cute? But um, the recipe link, if these are about to get a 10 out of 10, if they taste like they smell, they will. Oh, the apple's still got a bit of crunch in it. Oh, yum. There's no soggy muffin here. Did I grieve it when the muffin came out? <laughs> They're my family. Yeah, taste of it, taste of vision. Oh, oh, thrilled! I went with cinnamon. Seriously, fuck the cardamom off. Most people don't have. I mean, I have cardamom because I cook a lot of Middle Eastern, a lot of Asian food. But a lot of people wouldn't have cardamom. And at least, I mean, I've got cardamom pods and seeds, but I don't even have ground cardamom. And I cook with that shit all the time. But everyone's got cinnamon. Even if people have only got three spices in their kitchen, cinnamon's usually one of them. These, oh, my God. Yep. They're black book, which means they're a 10 out of 10. These are moist. They're crumbling. They're so moist. Mind you, the ones that cool down will have a bit of hold to them, but when you can't wait for them to cool down to do a taste test. Um, the cinnamon with the pear and apple is amazing. I haven't actually tasted much apple. I've tasted heaps of pear. I'm just going to stand here and eat the whole frigging thing. And then I'm going to do a quick clean up because I don't have to do a um, I don't have to do the full clean up yet. The salad doesn't require a lot of stuff, so I'll be doing a big load of dishes before I then do the chicken and button up pumpkin fritters. Rub it in. Mm, I will. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Yum yum yum. Yeah, these are awesome, guys. They were easy as hell too. Like, again, it's taken 50 minutes, 54 minutes, but um, they literally take 30 minutes to make. That's from start to scratch, like start to finish. They only took 12 minutes to cook and they are so good. The, the oils made them really moist along with the carrot. And look at that, you're hiding a veggie in there for your fussy little children you know who don't like their fruit or their carrots or veggies or whatever shove it in a muffin a sweet muffin they'll eat these muffins all they'll be able to taste is like buttery cinnamony cakey goodness mm. uh, do you know what i really love about them i just had some apple then the apple and the pear are still crunchy. They've still got texture to them. They're not soggy. See, we didn't make moist, moist muffins. We made moist muffins. We didn't make soggy, slimy muffins. These are to die for. So, yeah, the link is in the description, guys. Most people would have all of those ingredients in their kitchen. 
all your standard baking stuff, an egg, carrot, pear, and apple. And you get 12 healthy snacks. Good night, Morgan. Sorry that Sunny Bum didn't make an appearance. She's passed out over on her ottoman. It's dinner in 15 minutes. She'll be around in 15 minutes <laughs> on the job. My sweet dreams to you, gorgeous. And I know that you'll watch the replay of the salad. And, guys, honestly, thank you for the most hilarious, politically incorrect, porny, wrong live. That was so much fun. Um, I'm going to take my moist muffin offline for a minute, reset the kitchen, and I'll be back to make a salad. I know it's fucking exciting, but if anyone does feel like hanging out, please come back because um, I like hanging out with you guys. But, yep, fruity oat muffins, styled for the magazine, but nonetheless an absolute winner. Shove them in your gob. I'm taking care of my moist muffin. I suggest you go take care of yours too, Scott. We'll see you all again in, um, well, hopefully in about half an hour. Well, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, my God. Get on with it, Taurus. I'll see you all soon.